Today we're working on a fig shot. This is something that I came up with a little while ago. I've been wanting to shoot figs for a while and right now they're in season. So we've got figs out here on my stand and then I've just started to put together. Figs are in season right now, but they're hit and miss. In fact, I went to the store this morning to see if I could get some more fresh ones and they have none. They're not gonna be available for a couple weeks. These are green figs. I really love the purple ones because they have a lot more texture and a lot more color to them. But I'm gonna go ahead and shoot these anyway. I might actually revisit this in a couple of weeks when I see purple figs come in. It's one of those things, things are seasonal, you gotta grab them while they're there and make that shot happen because you don't always have a lot of time with some of the food that's in season. So right now I'm gonna play with a couple different things. I'm gonna go with my 85 1.2 lens on my Mark III. This is a full frame sensor and it's one of my go-to lenses. It's not something you would typically use with, with food, but I want to see what it looks like because I also want you to consider buying a lens that's going to have versatility for you. So you don't have to go out and buy a macro lens. If you've already got something like an 85, you might be able to make this work for your style of imagery. Once I get this shot done, I'm also going to put on an extension tube, which is going to allow me to get closer with the exact same lens. Again, I'm having versatility with my equipment so I can do multiple types of photography with the same set of lenses and camera bodies. Let me walk you through my set and the equipment that I'm using a little bit. What I've got is this old cutting board with a great linen that has some embroidery on it. Pulled that together, just kind of laid it out there because I want to give it that kind of morning feel and I also want to give it a sense of place and a sense of time, which is why I like the embroidery in here. It gives it a little bit of that kind of old feel and it definitely puts you in a home. I've grabbed a wood background that I'm actually tipping up and using as my background. I want to kind of look into it. I am concerned that it might be a little bit too dark in its tone and I may wind up switching that out. But I want something back there that's going to give me a little texture because I'm coming really low with this shot and I'm looking almost across. The light that I'm using is the Hensel and I've got this on a monoblock. This is really kind of an interesting light. Monoblocks are great because it's a power pack and a light all built into one. Uh, this is a nice compact little unit and we're going to take this on location as well. This is great versatility for both studio and location work if you want to use it in that fashion. Um, one of the things that's kind of nice about this particular piece of equipment, it actually has the ability to work with what they call free mask, which it will fire two very quick flashes. So if you've got to knock something out, it'll allow you to do that in post-production very easily by firing the background separately. So this is a nice little piece of equipment for you to look at. Now, the box that I've got on here is a Chimera Octabox. This is a five foot box, but it actually extends. You can see these studs here on the end. We can actually extend this out to a seven foot box and make it a lot bigger. Again, really versatile piece of equipment, which is nice. If you can buy a piece of equipment that serves two or three purposes, I think you're kind of ahead of the game. So now that we've got this kind of laid out for you, let's go ahead and start working with our stand in a little bit, see what we get exposure wise, and then we're gonna actually cook the food and bring it out here and shoot the hero. Whoa, all right, so that's a little bit hot. That's a little bit blown out. So let's make some adjustments here. So since these packs are different for me and I really don't know that equipment, obviously my guessing is off a little bit. Once you play with your equipment and use it kind of day in and day out, you really get a sense of where the power settings need to be, where you need to match it up with your camera. And I'm also, with this shot, I'm going really soft. I'm opening the 85 up pretty far. I'm at 2.8, which is probably too far. So let's go ahead and jump this down a little bit, maybe 4.0. Yeah, that's more in the right realm. Okay, I can already tell I don't like the background. The tone is way too different than the foreground. It, it, there's a disconnect and my eye is going to go right to it. If I add more light to it to bring it up in, in its exposure, it's just going to go the wrong direction because it's the wrong tone to begin with. So I'm going to swap that out quickly. So what I did here is I put the background on a C stand and I put it up on Apple boxes just to give me a little bit of height because I want to get that background up a little bit. Now I need, just need to get it so it's standing straight. So this bottom needs to come in a little bit and again I'm making sure that everything is tight. I'm going to wiggle this because if it doesn't fall on my set while I'm wiggling it, it's not going to fall on my set later when I've got my hero food out there. Remember, this is just the stand-in, so we're just kind of getting a sense of where we want to go with this. Still don't have enough on that side, but you know what? 
I haven't placed a crop on here yet and I'm really far away so let's go ahead and make a crop I'm gonna do my 14 by 22 I want this to be a big horizontal image so we're gonna go ahead and put that crop on here I can't get any closer with the 85 because I'm already at its its minimum focal distance so this is as close as I can get with this particular configuration of the lens so I'm gonna crop in a little bit and see what that looks like that's already better once we get rid of some of that extraneous stuff around the outside definitely improves the image all right so again I'm allowing myself to kind of let my eyes defocus a little bit because I want to see the objects without seeing the detail I want to see where things are falling in here and I know that that coffee cup I like it it's too close and as I defocus my eye the handle on this thing which is really cool it's a great antique the handles just is a round black dot nothing else in the image relates to that so now I'm wondering why that's there um, I want to switch coffee cups I like I like the way this looks but it doesn't feel quite right so I'm gonna do two things I'm gonna get something that's a little less distracting and I'm gonna get something that's taller I want to fill that space a little bit more everything's just a little too low so we're gonna go over to our prop spot So I'm not exactly in love with the coffee mugs yet. I grabbed a few more and I'm just going to quickly throw them out there. I'm going to take a couple quick captures and then I'm going to make my decision on which one I like. It's all about the shape and the height back there. Ugh. So really quickly just run through that, see what I like. That's distracting. It's too harsh of an angle. It's too dark. I know I don't want that one. This one's pretty good. It's light. It's subtle. It's got shape. It's got the right height. That one's too fat. It's the right shape, but it's too tall. So you can see how something as subtle as, the co as a background coffee cup can actually make a big difference in the composition and how your eye goes through it. And I think that's going to be my winner. Which, that's the last one, isn't it? Okay, there's potential here. So, this guy I got to clean up because it was in my prop room and it's nice and messy. So, we're going to clean this up and keep going. So what I'm going to do right now is I need a little bit of fill light on my stand and I can see that this is really kind of going dark here. I like the way the light is coming across it. The, only, the reason why I'm not putting another light up here, I don't want to overfill. I want to give that morning sensation. So I've got the light that's coming in one direction. In fact, I might even bring this light a little bit closer in order to make it feel like it's got a, a hotter gradation as the light you know, is more intense on the left side and moves through. I want that, that movement of light, which is why I'm not going to fill it completely. I'm just going to bring fill light in on the food in order to make it pop. All right, so I'm just going to load this guy up in a C clamp. Actually, I'm just going to load this guy in a C arm where it gives me the ability to kind of control it a little bit. I can tip it back and forth, kind of get it where I want it. better too much I'm gonna bring it forward you can see the huge difference it's made on the stand-in food without question it's really starting to light that up so I think I'm at a point where I actually want to go ahead and start to really look at this with the hero food because everything's going to change once I start to get that in place Although I know I want to break the edge a little bit more. That's kind of nice. See the way that shape is? I, but I want to change my crop a little bit. I feel like I've got too much room. So I want this thing to lead a little bit. And I'm going to take it down quite a bit and move it over. Now I want to be careful running the 
you know, kind of walking the line between realistic and artful. I, I'd like to keep pushing that plate over the edge because I think it's kind of cool, but realistically, you're not going to go that far with it in your home, so you don't want it to fall. That's kind of cool, though, because it's, it's bringing the eye to a place where it has to loop back in. As your eye goes up here, it hits this line, it comes back down, and the shape of the plate is bringing you back into the foreground. That's feeling much better to me. I think we can actually go ahead and start to work on our hero stuff. So let's go do that.